clean it all up again, of course, but not too bad. Let's get a look at it. Other than uh, taking off the excess, it's pretty much done. Deburr the counter bores, of course. Take a quick. Okay, that was stupid. I uh, I didn't put the uh, second half inch slot in, so we're gonna put it back in the vise and then do that. But you can see it; it actually you can just see this just slightly elongated on this one. Counterbore is. I just didn't do the middle, so that's easy. Fortunately, we got a stop in the vise, and we'll just set it in there and do that with a half inch, and be easy. Nothing to it. All right. Okay, that's done. Now we're good. So we'll do the other one off camera. There's no need for a repeat performance. The only difference being is that we're going to reference off of this edge instead of that edge. And then we'll uh, then the last thing we'll do is to uh, cut the bottoms off. So now we can now we actually have two slotted ovals. So I'll get the other one done and uh, get back to you. Okay, I think we're uh, we're finally almost done. So I uh, finished off the offsets, or uh, elongating all the holes, deburred everything. So what we need to do now is we're gonna we're gonna use a couple of the dowel pins. We're gonna pin them together, flip them over, take the face mill, and uh, go down to uh, 1.3. What is it? Uh, 1.375. 735, pardon me, 735, which is the original dimension um, that Kurt uses. I wanted to make them taller, but I didn't offset everything right, so we're going to go this way because that's kind of what we have to do. So we'll just uh, stick a couple pins in here. I've cleaned them all off real good, so they should, should go together nice. Just got to keep them parallel when you put them together because the pins fit super good. Uh-oh. Uh oh, I screwed up. There we go. So we still got our, our uh, joining line, one, two, male, female, our uh, movable and fixed. So we're just going to put them in this way. We still got our reference side on this one. So we'll put that on the back jaw. This is the side we need to take off. I'm going to leave a little. Wow, that's. It's uh, got a burr or something on there. Uh, I think it's actually the oil. It uh, feels almost like it wants to ring together. So it's not that smooth, but it's pretty smooth. Anyway, we're going to leave a little uh, sticking out of one side. Probably this side because it's easier. Just so I have something to measure with. Um, and then uh, then we will be done. And we'll, we'll put them in and see how they fit. And hope they work. Because otherwise, this was a lot of effort for uh, not much. <laughs> I think they'll be fine, but you know. All right, you feel good. Everything's dead flush. I love the, the pins in there. It keeps it keeps it straight. So let's. Uh, Put we're still in back gear, so let's take it out of gear. And you know we better slow it down one notch too. And I just got to thinking we may not actually have enough metal sticking out of there to uh, clean it up down to the dimension we want. Yeah, 735. So that's not gonna work. <laughs> Gotta to stick a parallel in there. We need need a little clearance. It needs to be the same size as what's in there, which obviously we can't get there from here. So we'll just take a parallel and put it on its side. 
It feels good. Same drill. Good. Now we'll mill it off and spring the knee up a little bit. And we'll bring the quill down a little ways. Lock it. So this is uh, it's now we've got it roughed down pretty close to size. It's uh, 1.760 and a half. So we need uh, 735. So that's a difference of 25 and a half thousandths. A little tiny under is fine. We definitely don't want it too big. So I'm going to take um, one last pass, and I'm going to actually go, you know, 26 thousandths, 27 thousandths, um, just so that that way I, I, I we we'll make sure we get enough. I don't want to take two more. So this is the end of our final pass. Should be three, three thou under or so. I just wanted a little clearance. Okay, so we're clear. Let's see where we ended up. We got uh, 731 and 5, 731 and a half. So we're three and a half under, which is just, just about where it should be. So um, that's, that's going to be good. So let's uh, get some of these chips out of the way and get the cutter out of the way. <laughs> See if these will actually fit into the vise like they're supposed to and then we can uh, we got to proof them one of the another day I'm not going to have time or inclination today to actually um, put them on the surface plate and check everything but it, it should be good obviously we've got a nasty burr there to get rid of clean that out see if I can actually grab the right allen wrench I did okay, let me knock the burr off We'll uh, see if they work. Okay, here we go. We're we're deburred. We've got to get them apart now. Which should be like putting them together. As long as you pull them apart straight and the pins don't bind, we're good. So this is our backside. This is the fixed jaw. This is going to go there. This one's going to go here as our movable jaw. So, here comes the moment of truth. Do they fit? And there's where my other cap screws that I couldn't find are. They hold my stop on. I knew they were, got used for something. Alright. Well, I am going to open this up a little more just so we got a little working room. I'm going to shut the phase converter off. Okay. More peace and quiet now. I turn the phase converter off. Oh, don't drop that in there. Our original Kurt job, which of course is beautiful, nice ground hardened steel. These are not ground or hardened. They are good metal, good steel, and hopefully they'll fit. I'll clean that all up real good. I'll give this one more hit with some air to make sure there's no stuff on it.
Okay, here we go. Moment of truth. So it, it looks right. The holes look like they line up and it'll sit up a little proud of the base, which is exactly what I wanted. That's why we got slots in it. So we'll just put this guy in here. I'm assuming the center distance is right. The other one will bolt right on. That should be right. I took it off the CAD drawing on the Kurt website, so should be right. And that looks like it's gonna work. So this is to replace the uh, me installing it upside down when I put it on originally. I stuck it like that, and sure enough, the bolts line up, and there's this huge gap under the bottom. I wanted a gap, but it, of course, it hit me almost immediately that it was wrong. But I had like three minutes worth of camera battery left, so that I wasn't wasn't going to bother. So anyway, um, they do fit right when you put them on the right direction. So, this will go in um, like so. And we have our, uh, some, you know, a little bit of adjustability in there from our, our uh, slotted holes for the, the uh, cap screws. So what I'm gonna, I've decided to do is I've got some shim stock. I'm, I'm probably just gonna um, build up, you know, 30 thousandths worth of shim stock and put it under there. Either that or some really small gauge uh, uh, music wire, piano wire, whatever you want to call it. I have some of that and I think it's pretty consistent all the way across. I haven't tried the the uh, movable jaw yet, but can't imagine that it won't fit. And then once once those are on there, if, if, the, uh, if the wire is parallel enough and I did a good job, then it should be we should be able to put a parallel on the pins, you know, put some pins in it down here somewhere. Doesn't really matter where, as long as they're on the same row. And then we'll, uh, this isn't a parallel, it's the other vice job. We'll put a parallel on there and uh, indicate it to make sure that we're really straight. And if not, we'll tweak it a little bit. Um, so the, uh, take this as our, our other factory jaw first time they've ever been off. I've never had an occasion to remove them. This vice isn't all that old. I picked it up when Inco had a big sale on it and replaced the in import one, which is, this is, is far better. So, um, you know, these, this will line up with the pins uh, as you see in early, uh, the rest of the video. Um, we got some chips under there. So, which of course you can't see the chips in here, but jaw did not want to sit up of the chips there we go sits up nice now so this should just fit in here nice just like the other one and it does so I, I did have kind of a and I still have a little bit of concern of how to line these up the right way the best way I should say um, and I'll put a piece of probably whatever I use to shim this one underneath this one as well. Um, what I may end up doing is um, bringing them over and, and just slightly snugging this and then just, you know, tap it around until it slides on the pins. That way I know they're going to be both the same because the, this head, since it moves and it, you can lift the back, I mean, it, I know it'll push down when it's tight, but um, for now, I think that's how I'm going to do to get it started on lining up. I still got something under there I can feel a burr. Maybe I may have a burr on the corner here. Yeah, I do. So uh, that's why it's not moving right. Okay, there it goes. It has a little burr. Um, so I got to deburr them a little more, but we're pretty much, pretty much good to go. Um, anyway, uh, again, thanks for watching. Thanks for the likes. Thanks for any comments. I uh, really appreciate it, and I hope somebody finds these useful. Um, I think they're going to get a whole lot of use. Uh, matter of fact, I'm sure of it. So, you know, like I say, uh, you can, you know, pop a Pop a couple pins in. I think that's the 45 degree mark. And you know, when you put it in there, well, that's not 45. Anyway, it is in there somewhere. I gotta get my chart finished.
I think it's there. So yeah, that'll give you 45 degrees. So if you you know put something in there and you need to cut it, it it'll it'll work out easy. And you could put them on both sides, I guess. And probably only one. And if you longer pins or pins on both sides, if you have to hold a bigger part, um, of course, a box of dowel pins is really cheap. Anyway, take care.